This is MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous lace stitch kimono. It has a nice belt for holding it in. You can undo the belt and open it and open it up. It's nice and wide and oversized. You can wear this as a cardigan or as a beach cover up. Really, it's just a great versatile piece to have in your spring and summer wardrobe. I'm gonna walk you through each of the steps. It's really easy to make. We're just making this up in two large rectangular panels, and then we're doing a really cool lace-up stitch just to seam them together. You'll need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and the yarn I'm using for this pattern is Kotlin. It's from We Crochet and it's a DK weight yarn. And you'll find all the details in the description box below. So our panel is 60 inches because it'll be for the front and the back of the cover up. So it will come down you about 30 inches from the shoulder down to mid thigh. So the starting chain that we make is going to be the total length of our panel. So that is the measurement of our front plus our back, which is about 60 inches. So for the cover up, I want you to chain out 227. So that's going to take a little bit of time for you to chain up, but I'm only going to work through a small demonstration for you because it will take so long for me to go through that many stitches. So I'm gonna chain a multiple of six plus five. So to keep my swatch small, I'll chain 23. So if you're making up a gauge swatch, this is a good size um, for you to do as well. And I'll have a pop-up that will let you know what the gauge for the pattern is. So now, again, if you're working ahead on the full cover-up, you're chaining 227, and that's multiples of six plus five. So we're gonna work a double crochet in the seventh chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll chain one, skip a chain, and work a double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip a chain, work a double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip a chain, work a double crochet in the next. So you're just repeating this all the way along your chain. So you just want to be really careful as you work along. It's such a long chain you're working from. You definitely don't want to make any errors. You should be ending with two chains. Already chain one, skip a chain, and a double crochet in the final stitch or the final chain. So that's how row one will look. So for row two, we'll chain one and turn. We won't count that chain one as a stitch. 
we'll single crochet into the double crochet. We're going to single crochet in the chain one space, single crochet in the next double crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. And we're going to do that all the way along our work. So I now have 19 stitches. If you're making the, the full length, you're going to have 223 stitches. So if you count up your single crochets, that's what you'll have. And sorry, I didn't. So in this last turning chain space here, we're working two. If we just put one here, we have 18 stitches, but we're putting an additional single crochet stitch. So one is for the chain one space, and then one is for this should be like a double crochet here. Okay, now for row three, we're gonna chain four, turn, and now the chain four is included as a double crochet and a chain one. We're gonna work a double crochet in that first stitch right there. Next, we're gonna chain two. We're gonna skip the next two stitches and in the next stitch, we're gonna work a single crochet. We're gonna chain two, skip the next two stitches and then we're going to work a double crochet chain two double crochet in that same stitch so it's like a v but we've got two chains in between rather than one which is our typical v stitch so now in the written pattern i will have a stitch chart and everything for you so if you prefer to have the written pattern to follow along with or the chart, there will be that available. And the link for that will be in the description box. So we'll chain two again. We'll skip two stitches and single crochet. So we're just repeating this pattern along. Chain two, skip two, and then in the next we're doing a double chain two and a double. Okay, so just repeat that and I'll meet you up at the end. Okay, so this is how things are looking. V, single, V, single, V, single. We're skipping two, we need a chain two, skip two, and then a V with only one chain in the final stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in that final single crochet stitch. So there we have now three rows complete. For row four, we're gonna chain three and turn. We're working three DC clusters across this row. Now our first one will be worked a little bit differently as our chain three is part of our first three DC cluster. So we're gonna yarn over go through the space, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now yarn over, pull through all three, and then we'll chain one. Now we'll work a proper 3DC cluster. So we'll yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And one more time. You should have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pulling through all four. And then we'll chain one. There'll be a chain one between all the three DC clusters we're gonna make. So this makes our beautiful shell. So let's yarn over to the next chain one space. We'll make a 3DC cluster. Pull through all four, chain one. We're gonna do three of them in this space. Pull through 
through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We've got four and chain one. So we need to make one more to finish off this shell. I'm not gonna keep working through it really slow because it will take a lot of time. Yarn over, pull through all four and chain one. And then we're just skipping over, making three 3D C clusters in this, and then I'll meet you up for the last one. Okay, so in our last chain one space, we're only gonna work two of our clusters. So there's one, pull through all four, chain one, and we'll make one more two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pulling through all four. Okay, so now we're basically getting, we've somewhat gone through the repeat. Definitely once we redo this one, working from here, you'll understand better. But basically, it's a four row repeat pattern. Okay, so for row five, we're gonna chain four. We're gonna skip over this cluster, the chain one space, and we're gonna work a double crochet in the top of that cluster. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna work a double crochet in the top of this cluster. Chain one, work a double crochet in the next cluster. Chain one, work a double crochet in the next cluster. So this is what we're doing all the way along. So we're chaining one, skipping over the chain one spaces and working DCs in all the clusters. Okay, so you should be ending with your chain one and a double crochet in the final cluster chain one and turn. So this is basically now a repeat of row two. We're working our single crochets now. So work a single crochet in the first, work a single crochet in the chain one space, single crochet in the double crochet, and in the chain one space and work that all the way across. And I'm at 17. 18, so we're putting two in that final space because one is counting for the chain one space and one for the double crochet. So now you can basically go back through the video watching row three, row four. It's one, two, three, four, and five and then this is six, and just complete working this. So for your repeat of row three, you're chaining four and working a double crochet in that first stitch. We chain two, skip two, and a single crochet, chain two, skip two, and then a V with two chains. So double, two chains, and a double. So I have, I haven't blocked my piece or anything yet. So let me just, the front piece wants to, the starting chain wants to curl a little bit. 
So I have about 15 and a half. So we're wanting to for sure end on that single crochet row. Make sure you're ending after your last row of clusters, you're gonna have these that double crochet chain one space row and then your single crochet row. So that's what you're ending on. If you wanna continue with this and make it bigger, you can continue with another repeat or two or really however big you wanna go. You just be sure that you're ending on your single crochet row. And so once you've completed your first panel, you'll just fasten that off. I used six balls in total for that panel and I have about this much left over. So you'll wanna go ahead and make another panel now. So you want two panels in total. Once those panels are blocked, you wanna just block them out to measurements to make sure everything's even. And then I'll meet you up for the seaming. Okay, so once we have our two panels made, next step is to block them. So I've already blocked my panels. And when you're blocking your panel, it's gonna be blocking out to 16 inches. And our length is 60 inches. So 16 by 60 for each panel. And then what we're gonna do is seam, how we're gonna seam these together is almost like we're tying shoelaces. So first off you want to mark out the halfway point with stitch markers. So we have 223 stitches in total so I worked up to 111 and I put a marker. So 112 stitches will be in the front, 111 up the back. So count all your stitches up, mark on each side of the panel and next we need to measure out how much yarn we're gonna need in order to do this really nice shoelace tie seaming these together. So I'm gonna measure out the length of my measuring tape. And I'm gonna do that five times. which is about 300 inches. So there's two. Three. Four. And five. Now I'm just taking the tails and I'm making, just having that that it's half. And now what you're gonna need to use is two yarn needles. This just makes it a lot easier. And we're going to put one through that marked stitch. Take the other one. Putting it through the other marked stitch. Make sure that we have the yarn tails even. Then you're just gonna wanna pull this all through so that your strands to start off with are gonna be even in here. Okay, so once you have that, I'm gonna now readjust my camera so you can have a better 
look at what I'm doing. It's going to be a lot of work when we have these really long strands to work with, but as we move along, it won't be too bad. So you want to make sure you have them separated so that you're working correctly. And we want to leave this about three quarters of an inch open. And this just will help it hang down around your neck a little bit better than if it's like this. It just helps. So rather than making a panel down the back center here, we're doing it this way just to leave that we have a little bit of a neck opening. So you can take your measuring tape. So I have about an inch there and you want about three quarters of an inch. So what you're gonna do, try to move this a little bit closer. You're just gonna take your needle on this side. You're gonna go through the next stitch. You're gonna pull that all the way through. Take your other needle, go to the stitch on this side, and then go back to this side. back to this side as our tails are when our tails are really long here to come through it takes a little bit more time As we get going it does speed up if you just get yourself properly situated just like I am here it actually shouldn't be too difficult So this is all we're doing. We're coming up under. And I do two at a time. And if you are leaving a larger gap, you may want to use more yarn so set this down here to the bottom so you're always going over this way just want to make sure you have enough yarn pulled off here that you don't run out so i may have a little extra than i need this time but the first time I did this, I ran short, even when I thought I had a lot. So I'm just gonna keep working away at this off camera, because this does take a little bit of time. And then once I get to the end, I'll meet you up again. 
Okay, so I'm getting close to the end here and I'm just slowly trying to bring it in so that it's going to close up at the bottom here. I still have quite a bit of yarn left, but that's okay. Better lots than not enough. And I maybe actually went from my original test. I think I maybe had them going in a little closer, but that's okay. Again, I'd rather you have too much yarn than too little. Now what we'll do is we'll just trim these ends and then we can weave them in. Now I should have, I shouldn't have ended with two here. I should have ended with one on each side. So I maybe messed up somewhere along the way. I think one stitch off, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, if you're really off, you may have to go back and see where you missed. So I'm just going to take that tail and this one and knot it and then weave those ends and then this one I'm just gonna weave and now when I weave I want to make sure I'm going to the wrong side of my work just looking to kind of just hide the yarn through the stitches we'll go one way and then back in the opposite direction and we'll do that for all of the tails Okay, so our next step is to line up the sides of our cover up. So what I did is I also made sure that the shells were lining up, um, not just evening out at the bottom, but just making sure all the shells, all the stitch pattern is perfectly lined up before you start sewing. So I have my right sides facing this is my wrong side. So I've measured out 12 inches. And when I've joined in, I'm joining into the double crochet of each side here. And then I'm also not gonna seam right up to the bottom. So I've left approximately six inches and I've made sure I've lined up the double crochet stitches along that it's completely even. So then you just want to take a long strand begin that with a knot and then we're going to seam all the way down. I kind of like those double crochets as a marker as I go down. So we have our chain one space. 
and then you can grab the double crochet from the one side and from this side. Just so you're really sure as you work along that you're getting this seamed perfectly. So I'm going to complete working that down and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so I finished off down here leaving my six inches and I've just knotted that and I'll weave the end in and I'll come back here to the start and just going to make sure that that seemed well and then I'm going to weave this end and going through one way and then back in the opposite direction. So now when you look at the right side, if you've made sure to get your seam just right, you'll have a really nice seam like this down the side. And now I'm just gonna work over uh, on the other side and complete. Okay, so the next thing where I'm gonna show you how to do is make the belt. So what I've done is I've weaved the belt through the kimono. So I like to put it through the shells here. So to make sure I went through the same spot all the way around, I counted up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven shells. And out from, from the side here, one, two, three, four, five. So Five. Now you can put you can put yours wherever, but you just want to make sure that you do it the same on both sides of the front, and then you want the same idea going through the back as well, so that it's going to pull in nicely. So you can kind of try it on and then see where you like the belt and then just make sure you have it positioned evenly throughout. So now what I've also done to the belt is I've added uh, feathers to the end just to give it really a fun look. You could do tassels if you prefer. It's really up to you but I kind of like this look. I thought it looked really cool. So to make the belt we're gonna wind off three strands and we want them 240 inches in length for each strand. You can go, if you're thinking you want your belt longer than what I have made, let's say you're a little bit larger and you want your belt not in quite as tight, it comes out a little bit more, you might want to do a little bit more than that. But for the size belt that I've done, you want to to roll off 240 inches and you want three strands so i'm just going to do a demonstration because i've already made my belt so i'll just do mine a little bit smaller but i'll show you how i made it so i'm using my 5.5 millimeter hook not sure where my pink one went, so I just grabbed this one. And what you want to make sure is that you're leaving a tail at the end. So if you look at the end of my belt here, I've left a tail so that we can make our feather right on here. So make a slip knot leaving a long tail and then you're just going to start chaining so this is all you're going to do so 
So for my belt, I had about 164 chains. But you're basically going to work through whatever you have in yarn, making sure that you're leaving a tail. And then you just pull through. So again, mine's much shorter, but if you've rolled off how much I told you, you should have something that looks like this, two tails at the end, but a nice long belt in between. So you want to get those as close as you can so that they're about the same size. So for mine, I have about two and a half inches. And I've cut a total of 48 pieces that are eight inches in length. So I've already pre-cut mine, but you just wanna take your measuring tape and you want them about eight inches and you're gonna need, if you make your feather about my size, 48. So now to do this, it's really, really easy. Fold one strand in half, stick it down here. Take your other piece, fold it in half, push it up through, grab your tails, and then take both of your tails and pull. And then you can just push that up. I'm going to bring in the camera a little bit closer here just so you can see a little better. Okay, so this time I'm going to go in this way. Push it up. You can do them all the same way, but that just alternates the way the knot looks. So that's how it's looking. And you just keep doing this until you filled in all the spaces. So if you need more or less based on how much space you left between your knot, that's fine. Just keep basically filling it in. Some yarns even work better for doing this. The cotton, it's not gonna, this cotton's not gonna fray. Like if you're using a worsted weight yarn, you could brush it out and it would give it a real feathery look. But this cotton doesn't really fray, so you're not gonna get the same look going with it. But I think it still looks really pretty. Just gives your piece that little extra something special. So I'm going to continue attaching all of these pieces off camera because it does take a little bit of time to do them. Okay, so this is what it's looking. Just pulling them down just a little bit to make sure they go right down to the knot. So the next thing I did is I just cut out a little template in some soft cardboard. Could use some paper, whatever. I just find that this is a little bit easier just to keep. You can just wing it and do your shape, 
but this way I can keep them both very similar size and it just helps when you're cutting. So just put your template over top. You can use a comb if you want just to kind of brush, brush them out. So you want your feather to just kind of hang down. So then I'm just going to take my scissors. I'm going to leave that one. just following along my template here. So there's one side. I do have lots of extra, but it's much easier to attach them if you have a lot. So then that's just how your feather is going to look. I think I maybe it moved slightly. Mine looks a little off center, but that's okay. It was hard to try to show you on the camera and do it. doesn't it really doesn't have to be perfect I think it just gives it a really beachy tropical feel to it so this is how it looks all tied up this kimono is perfect to wear as a cover-up or even just as a nice spring summer cardigan over a tank top but, you know, at the beach, wherever, it's going to be the perfect versatile piece for your summer wardrobe. Mm -hmm.